hey again, technical writing students. Today we're going to talk about working on cover letters, which are a bit of a different genre from resumes and perhaps different from anything you've ever really written before. Cover letters at first can seem kind of intimidating, but today in the video I'm going to break down for you the three specific sections that you'll see in every cover letter. And once you get that formula down, it'll be a little bit easier and more comfortable for you to write them. So let's get started. Cover letters are different from resumes in that they offer a more in-depth look at a specific experience or two that you've had as a professional. And this is to give folks an opportunity to see how the work you've done before will connect with the organization or company that you're applying to. It also expands upon your resume in such a way that you give additional information and insight in how you'll contribute to a company and its work. So that being said, the goal here is not to simply restate points from your resume. You don't want folks to read your cover letter and say that they've got nothing new from it when they've already looked at your resume before. So to write a cover letter, you might want to consider how to answer a question like, tell me about a project you managed recently, or explain how the skills that you've been developing in your academic program at Purdue are put into practice. Cover letters are all about telling professional stories. So if you like creative writing, you might find this a little bit easier of a genre than resume writing, which is a little bit more brief and condensed. Here you have some more room to say, this is what I've done before, and here's how it's gonna contribute to the work of your organization. Cover letters should be written single spaced with space between paragraphs. There's an example letter here that I've also uploaded to Blackboard that's actually from one of my own job applications when I was in college. I was applying to be a copy editor at our student newspaper. And this letter got me an interview, but then I failed my copy editing test, so I didn't get a job offer. Um, so do as I say, not as I do, but this is a great way to show you that even your instructor sometimes has trouble with these types of documents. Your cover letter should have spaces between your closing and your name where you can sign or create a digital signature that you can put on a PDF or document version of your cover letter. Paragraphs for a cover letter should be aligned to the left and you should have standard one inch margins. Your cover letter and your resume should be a matching set of documents. So they should have the same font style and the heading should be the same. So if you have a blue bold-faced name at the top of your resume, you should have a blue bold-faced name at the top of your cover letter. This makes the documents a matching set and shows consistency, but also demonstrates your understanding of personal branding. Like with your resume, the heading of your cover letter should include your name, your address, your phone number, and your email address so that the recipient or recipients know how to contact you. Like I said before, there are three major steps to writing a cover letter, kind of like to writing an essay. Remember in high school when you learned about the five paragraph essay that had an introduction, some body paragraphs, and a conclusion? This is kind of like that, where you have an introduction to yourself and your work, body paragraphs, that go over a specific experience or a couple of experiences you've had as a professional, and then a closing where you thank your reader and then invite them into a future conversation. The introduction should include a salutation, right? Dear so-and-so. A greeting where you say hello and introduce yourself. You should put the title of the position you're applying to because when a hiring manager has lots of these on their desk, they might get messed up and you want them to know which position corresponds with which person. Talk about how you discover the position, especially if you have a personal link to it. So if your friend who works at the company already told you about it, or if you've had a conversation at a conference with someone who works in the division, you'll want to show that you're linked to the company already. Say, my friend, Bob Jones, told me about this opening and he works in accounting. Give a brief description of your relevant qualifications and touch on your values and professional goals. 
One more thing about the introduction that is really important to note, please do not address cover letters with to whom it may concern. This is very impersonal and also kind of old fashioned. You want to address your cover letter to a specific person or position. Sometimes this can be found in the job posting itself. It'll say, address your cover letter to this person in the department or to this hiring manager. If you can't find it there, you might need to do a little bit of searching on the website for the company, organization, or office. If worse comes to worse, you're gonna have to call them up and ask who to address your cover letter to. Now I know this is scary because I too, as a fellow millennial, do not like to talk on the phone, ever. But it'll help get your foot in the door and your name in their heads for when your materials come across their desk. And that helps. Like I said, you're gonna wanna take the initiative here to figure out who's gonna be reading this cover letter and to address it to them. The body of your cover letter should be one, two, three, well-formed paragraphs. One paragraph is just fine, especially if you're just starting out. But if you've had multiple relevant professional experiences, or if you wanna to connect to a couple of different skills or requirements in the job posting, you might have two to three paragraphs. For your body, you're gonna to wanna to give context for the skills that you talk about in your resume. So you might have listed there that you have conflict resolution skills. This is your place to talk about a time when you resolved a conflict. You're going to want to go in depth into your experience and your skills. And the best thing to do to take your cover letter from good to great is to talk about how these skills and proficiencies will help you contribute to the company or organization you're applying to. So I can say that I have experience teaching in these different areas. But it goes a step further for me to say, I have experience teaching in these areas and it will help me enrich the school I'm applying for in this way. So make sure to connect your experiences back to the place that you're applying to be a part of. Finally, in the conclusion of your cover letter, you're gonna wanna re-emphasize the overlapping interests and goals that you have with the organization or company you're applying for. Again, touch on that relevant professional experience one more time, and then invite your audience to discuss your qualifications in the future. Say, I hope you'll agree that my experiences in these positions has prepared me well for a job at this company. I hope that you'll contact me at your convenience to discuss this further. Make sure that you acknowledge that you appreciate the person for reading your cover letter and that you look forward to talking with them in the future. A little bit of gratitude and courtesy goes a long way. Like I said earlier, cover letters can be a little bit difficult to master at first, especially since they seem kind of intimidating because you're supposed to condense your entire professional ethos down to one page. The Purdue OWL has additional information and recommendations on cover letters that you can look at. I'm gonna link them on Blackboard and with this video. And then I'll include some examples on Blackboard that you can take a look at of cover letters from people I know who have gotten them jobs. There's also a scan of a book chapter that breaks down the different persuasive moves of a cover letter in more detail. I hope that this video lesson will help you to write really effective standout cover letters. And again, I'm always here to help you if you get stuck. Good luck with the rest of your work in English 421Y this week, and I'll see you online.